reading the file Facts from Resident Evil 2002. Richard A. Hines. To Sanitation Division. Attention, Manager of Sanitation. From Raccoon Disaster Contingency Committee. The contents of this fax are confidential and intended for the named addressee only. Any copying or disclosure of the contents of this fax to any third party is strictly forbidden by the sender. After reading the contents of this fax, it must be destroyed immediately. We expect significant increase in the damage done by the recent T-virus outbreak than initially estimated. There are several concerns. First concern. More than half of the researchers have been infected by the T-virus and died. It has also been reported that almost all of the survivors of this accident are starting to show symptoms of the T-virus infection. Second concern. Our secret security patrol team has also been completely eradicated. Therefore, our most secret research is in danger of public disclosure. Quick actions are demanded to prevent mass media coverage. Third concern. There is a high possibility that most of the specimens are running loose inside the compound. We expect many casualties to follow. However yet unfortunate, these casualties underscore the success of our research results. Actions must be taken to prevent our research results from being made public. We suspect the first official intervention will come from the state police and STARS. We strongly recommend taking measures against them first. And now, reading from the file Butler's Memo from Resident Evil 4, James, aka Moist Owlet, who you can follow on Twitter at J A Y D E E S. Knowing that Signor Ramon Salazar has no family, Lord Sadler must have used his strong faith in Los Illuminados to his advantage to talk Signor Salazar into undoing the seal of the Las Plagas once done by his ancestor. Signor Salazar would never do such a thing unless he was in some way being used unknowingly. I should have sensed the Lord's dirty scheme sooner. I feel like I'm partly responsible for all of this. I have no idea as to what the Lord is planning, but Signor Salazar was just being used. It is too late now, however. Signor Salazar has already taken the Plaga into his body. There is no turning back once the Plaga has turned into an adult in the body. The Plaga parasite will not die unless the host dies. There is no cure. Perhaps Signor Salazar may have been vaguely aware of the Lord's plan all along, but it's so hard to tell. Nevertheless, there is nothing I could do about it now. I have served the Salazar family for generations. I am prepared to continue my services until the very end. And now, reading the file Giovanni's Will from Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, Peter Starr, who you can follow on Twitter at DiscoPete117. It's too late for us, but at least I can let the world know what happened here. I was on night shift yesterday, so I was taking a nap in the bunk room around noon. I was half asleep and I heard a kid, a little girl, laughing. Or was that all in my head? I woke up at 1930. There was some sort of ruckus in the passageway. Drew, one of uh, the engineers, he came in and said there was something going on down below, maybe a, a riot. He looked pale in the face. He, he told me he was going down to check it out, but he never came back. It must have been around 1950 when I heard the scream. I went to the laundry room to check and saw Clark being eaten by some sort of blackish monster. 
The monster turned and started coming towards me, huge, shock-like teeth snapping in its jaw. I, I just screamed like a little girl and ran for it. Now I'm huddled up in the bunk room, shaking as I write this. There's a whole host of those creatures lurking in the passageways now. I, I can still hear screams now and then. But there's no way I'm going out there now. And that's it. I've written everything I know. Signed, Giovanni Finetti. And now, reading the file, Director's Diary from Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, Mikey Russell, who you can follow at youtube.com forward slash Mikey Russell. September 10th. These patients suffer from gangrene and congestion of their blood at first. Then their mind slowly deteriorates. In the end, there's nothing left of their mind. When that happens, even mercy killing seems pointless. After all, they are already dead. This disease is unlike anything I have ever witnessed. Once the patient's mind is gone, they become flesh hunger monsters and act like wild animals or on some type of bloodlust. September 18th. Another patient has been admitted to the hospital. He's showing symptoms of the first stages of the disease at this point, but... I haven't been able to sleep at all these past few days. I refuse to let these patients become zombies. I'm not just an ordinary citizen. I am a doctor. Even if I die, my clinical charts will contribute to finding a cure. September 26th. We lost most of the doctors and the staff during the battle against the zombie patients. It's impossible to maintain the hospital under these conditions. And I know that it's too late for me. I'm beginning to feel the same itchy and hungry desire that all of my patients felt. It's too late for me. And now, reading the file, Type 3 Plaga's Field Test from Resident Evil 5, Lawrence Knott. One week has passed since the initial field test of Type 3 Plagas. Type 3 was designed to display dramatically enhanced physical abilities over previous versions. The original Las Plagas had a special Plaga, known as the Control Plaga, that would provide a host with enhanced physical abilities. These control types were limited in number, and they always caused severe physical changes in the host, and thus it was not always expedient to use them. From a business standpoint, this was undesirable. The idea was to create super soldiers without any side effects, something consumers wanted. The teams are currently working on developing a similar product to Las Plagas for commercial use, but given the affinity Las Plagas has for human hosts, it seems advantageous to continue to develop it. Other methods may produce superior super soldiers, but if they do not render the host completely controllable, their effectiveness would be limited. Taking a subordinate Plaga, the base Las Plagas, and implanting a gene from the control Plaga, created a new type of Plaga, the Type 3. It is believed that if Type 3 can be perfected, it will become the new standard on the bioweapons market. But that day is still in the offing. During a recent field test, a number of issues came to the fore. The chief problem is its ineffectual adherence rate. In adult and adolescent males, the adherence rate is approximately 92%, the same for normal Las Plagas. For women and young children, Type 3 has a 0% adherence rate. With these disappointing results, it is obvious that in its current state, Type 3 would not render an adequate product. In addition, superficial mutations were invariably fatal. This is thought to be due to the dynamic influence of the control plaga gene. The test, however, was not without some favourable results. Our goal to realise dramatic physical enhancement was somewhat realised. The jumping power of the host has shown remarkable improvement. Another point is one we hadn't predicted. Size increase in the hosts, with some reaching a height of almost 3 metres. This could also be due to the gene from the control plaga, but it is within acceptable parameters. With this field test, we did not achieve all our initial desired results, but the test was not a complete failure. It may be possible to use the information garnered from the current tests and use them to make improvements in any future tests. 
And now, reading the file Secretary's Diary A from Resident Evil 2 1998, DQJ, who you can follow on Twitter at Q underscore J underscore 6. April 6th. I accidentally moved one of the stone statues on the second floor when I leaned against it. When the chief found out about it, he was furious. I swear the guy nearly bit my head off, screaming at me never to touch the statue again. If it's so important, then maybe he shouldn't have put it out in the open like that. April 7th. I heard that all the art pieces from the chief's collection of rare items, literally worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know which is the bigger mystery, where he finds those tacky things, or where he's getting the money to pay for them. May 10th. I wasn't surprised to see the chief come in today with yet another large picture frame in his hands. This time it was a really disturbing painting, depicting a nude person being hanged. I was appalled by the expression on the chief's face as he leered at that painting. Why anyone would consider something like that to be a work of art is beyond my comprehension. And now, reading the file, Researchers Will from Resident Evil Outbreak, Geist, who you can follow on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash wandering voice actor. Oh, oh, oh. I can't believe this. Three days have passed as a couple of subjects in the 125R would escape from B area, began a killing spree in the laboratory. I think at least ten of my colleagues have been killed by them. However, I got to experience the horror first and as one of their giant sharp claws ripped my body. The bleeding from the wound just doesn't seem to stop. Why? Why did we create such terrible things? We had no right to play God. The only thing left for me to do now is to destroy the laboratory temperature controls. When the temperature drops down to about zero degrees, they'll be frozen in their tracks. <laughs> Hopefully. This is about the only thing I can do now. Damn my foolishness! And now, reading the file, copy of emails to Umbrella HQ from Resident Evil 2 2019, Carla, aka Stell, who you can follow at twitch.tv forward slash responage. Director Owens, there are alarms going off all over Nest. I don't know what's going on, but I can hear gunfire, and I can't reach my section chief. We're trapped. Please, send help ASAP. Director Owens, the situation here is dire. Nest has been contaminated with the virus. It's unbelievable. The failsafe system didn't activate at all. Is this the work of outsiders? I can't imagine who else it could be, but why? Mary and Kim are dead. I can't stop coughing. Why won't you answer me? Director Owens, it was you. And now, reading the file, Record of Events from Resident Evil 2 2019, Michael Burgertime Early, who you can follow on Instagram at Painted Table Ready. September 25th. We are turning the station into an emergency shelter due to the massive sudden outbreak. All police personnel have been instructed to make the safety of the citizens their top priority as we try to accommodate as many of them as possible. September 25th. Addendum. One of the refugees attacked us in the middle of the night, resulting in the death of one officer and injuring three others. The person in question was quickly restrained. We believe this was simply a case of someone snapping under the intense stress. September 26th. A mob attacked the station today, resulting in a number of casualties. A few survivors were able to make it safely behind the emergency shutters. 
but surrounded as we are, it'll be hard for any of us to escape this place. We're not sure we can fix any of our comm equipment, so we remain cut off from the outside world. September 27th. There was another clash on the west side of the station around 1 p.m. Twelve people died. There's only a handful of survivors left. Everything is falling to disarray in here. David Ford. And now, reading the file, Anatomist's Note from Resident Evil Code Veronica, Mike Martin, who you can follow on Twitter, at Evil Deadites. There's a demon in my mind. I can't control the fierce impulses that the demon sometimes drives me to act upon. It is a brutal ceremony. With the demon next to me, I enjoy watching people agonize in pain, screaming and convulsing repeatedly as they die. But Sir Alfred was kind enough to acknowledge me and has given me the facilities, chemicals, and equipment necessary to study everything. I must never betray Sir Alfred's kindness. It is especially critical that no one discovers the sacred place that only he and I know about. I swear the basement of this medical building will be kept secret. Of course, I keep the key to the sacred place with me at all times. Even if an outsider sees it, they'll never be able to tell that it's the key. I must remember that my life ends when I lose Sir Alfred's trust. And now, reading the file, Secretary's Diary B from Resident Evil 2 1998, DQJ, who you can follow on Twitter at Q underscore J underscore 6. June 8th. As I was straightening up the Chief's room, he burst through the door with a furious look on his face. It's only been two months since I've started working here, but that's the second time I've seen him like this. The last time was when I bumped into that statue. Only this time he looked even more agitated than ever. I seriously thought for a moment that he was going to hurt me. June 15th. I finally discovered what the Chief's been hiding all along. If he finds out that I know, my life will be in serious danger. It's getting late already. I'm just going to have to take this one day at a time. And now, reading the file, Suicide Note, from Resident Evil 2002, the Oracle Dragon from Crimson-Head.com, who you can follow on Twitter at the Oracle Dragon. June 22nd, 1998. I had to do it. We ran from those things, helping each other to survive, but Robert... started to show the symptoms. <laughs> we had to do it. <laughs> Those damn things are pure evil. There was no other way. <laughs> he would have done the same if it were the other way around. After I put him out of his misery, I had to just put him in the bathroom. Now, I'm probably the last one. <laughs> How could this happen? I'll never forgive myself for being part of this project. Eventually, I'll get what's coming to me, though. There's no way to escape from this nuthouse. It's just a matter of time now. Everything is set. All I need is a little courage to get it done. If many things are done, it's regret beyond words. But. This is better than just waiting to turn into one of them. Please. Please understand. And at least let me end my life as a person. <laughs> Linda. Please forgive me.
And now, reading the file Mercenary's Diary from Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, Glenn Bolthwis, who you can follow on Twitter at YonShadyGlenn. September 1st. Following six months of intensive training, my body's edge had returned. I was a good soldier, but they ordered my execution with no reason given. I was tortured and forced to give a false confession. But on the morning of my execution, a miracle happened. The company had helped me out, giving me a second lease on life. September 15th. I ended my vacation short and returned to the HQ office. It looks like my UBCS unit's been called into action. Umbrella maintains its own paramilitary unit to counter corporate terrorism and VIP abduction. In addition, they have nightmen who specialize in handling problems caused by illegal products. I'm currently a member of the latter. September 28th. Dawn's here, but we're still slugging through this nightmare. There are no provisions of any kind here. The undead walk the streets, feeding upon the flesh of the living. Given the choice again, I would rather have been executed. Death Row was a heavenly asylum compared to this place. I've chosen to pull the trigger myself, in the hope that my dead body won't come back to life. And now, reading an excerpt from Rebecca's Diary from the Brady Games Guide to Resident Evil Zero, Sammy Bold, who you can follow on Twitter at Sammy underscore Bold. July 23rd, 1998, 10.25pm. I'm so excited. It's my first mission as field medic on the STARS Bravo team. I certainly hope my comrades can benefit from my assistance. But our mission is disturbing. Murderers roam the forests? Perhaps we can finally answer that question and solve this case for the benefit of the community. Still, I wonder if it was a good idea for Captain Marini to split us up after we discovered that wrecked MP vehicle and those dead soldiers. If there really is an escaped military convict in these woods, we might be unable to assist him individually. Wait, what is that object beyond the trees? Is that a train? Why is it parked out here in the middle of the woods? If we are to get to the bottom of this case, I have to be brave and investigate. Hours have passed and we still can't find a way out of this facility. What was the Umbrella Corporation doing in this foreboding place? Why all the security locks, secret passages, and traps? This seems less like a training facility for new employees and more like a channel house of unspeakable horrors. My sense of dread continues to grow as we encounter more and more members of Umbrella's first investigation unit turned into creepy zombies. If Umbrella's own personnel had no chance to survive, how can we live through this night? Lieutenant Cohen has proved to be a valuable ally in almost every situation. I will never forget being trapped in that mutant monster's claws. I was sure it was all over. Yet Billy risked his own life to save me. How did he kill all those people? It must be some kind of mistake. I have to find out the truth about him, and I think we also need to find out what happened to the mysterious Dr. Marcus. Did he really disappear, or could he still be here after all these years? And now, reading the file, Keeper's Diary from Resident Evil 1996, Sonny Bauer, who you can follow on Twitter at Artie Scarano. May 9th, 1998. At night we played poker with Scott the Guard, Alias, and Steve the Researcher. Steve was very lucky, but I think he was cheating. Huh. <laughs> what a scumbag. May 10th, 1998. Today, a high-ranking researcher asked me to take care of a new... monster. It looks like a gorilla without any skin. They told me to feed them live food. When I threw in a pig, they were... playing with it. Tearing off the pig's legs and pulling out the guts. 
before they actually ate it. May 11th, 1998. Around 5 o'clock this morning, Scott came in and woke me up suddenly. He was wearing a protective suit that looks like a space suit. He told me to put one on as well. I heard there was an accident in the basement lab. It's no wonder. Those researchers never rest. Even at night. Hmm. May 12th, 1998. I've been wearing this annoying spacesuit since yesterday. My skin grows musty and feels very itchy. By way of revenge, I didn't feed those dogs today. And now I feel better. <sighs> May 13th, 1998. I went to the medical room because my back is all swollen and feels itchy. They put a big bandage on my back and the doctor told me I did not need to wear the spacesuit anymore. <sighs> I guess I could sleep well tonight. May 14th, <coughs> 1998. When I woke up this morning, I found another blister on my foot. It was annoying, and I ended up dragging my foot as I went to the dog's pen. They've been quiet since morning, which is very unusual. I found that some of them had escaped. I'll be in real trouble if the higher-ups find out. <clears throat> May 15th, 1998. Even though I didn't feel well, I decided to go see Nancy. It's my first day off in a long time, but I was stopped by the guard on the way out. They say that the company has ordered that no one leave the grounds. I can't even make a phone call. What kind of joke is this? May 16th, 1998. I heard a researcher who tried to escape from this mansion was shot last night. My entire body feels burning and itchy at night. When I was scratching the swelling on my arms, a lump of rotten flesh dropped off. What the hell is happening to me? <sighs> May 19th, 1998. Fever gone, but itchy. Hungry, and eat doggy food. Itchy, itchy Scott came. Ugly face, so killed him. Tasty. For itchy. Tasty. And now, reading the files Seda and the Third Party from Resident Evil 4 in character as Vitores Mendez, Israel Blank Marino, who you can find on Newgrounds at Blank 1407. The whereabouts of Seda are still unknown. Most likely he's using an old secret passage taught to him by his grandfather, who used to hunt in this region long ago. I'm pretty certain that he's hiding our property somewhere in the forest. If his grandfather was still alive, I would have used him to find Sarah. 
But how did he find out about the egg injected into his body? And the fact that he was able to remove it before it hatched is concerning. Another factor that concerns me is that Sarah escaped with our property just before the American agent arrived. I don't believe that was just a coincidence. There has to be another player involved in this. In order to settle this whole situation, we have to capture Sarah and wait for the effects of the drug to wear off before we inject him with another egg. Once this is done, whoever is behind all of this will surface. Nobody shall interfere with our plans. Those who do shall suffer severe consequences. And now, reading the file transcript from Resident Evil Revelations, Brendan Mason, who you can find on Twitter at BMasonVA. Dearest friend, I am at my wit's end. I am sorry, but I must go on ahead. They are sleeping, but they will wake up eventually. Now's my chance. Just thinking about them makes my hair stand on end. Their ugly bodies are not of this world. Their stench, like rotting organs. And their screams, like echoes from hell itself. I'm so frightened that I can't stop shaking even now as I write this. Be careful. The bloated blisters on the walls are their eggs. They can regenerate from them. Please don't think that I've abandoned you. I did it for my family. I will pray for your safety. And now, reading the file Doctor's Journal from Dino Crisis, Carl from Evil Pixel, who you can find on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash evil pixel. It's easy to unleash any kind of power. The real task is keeping the power under control. The improvement of the initializer ignition device has enhanced energy efficiency to the maximum. Despite that progress, we've been unable to advance the development of the stabilizer safety valve since the accident that happened three years ago. The third energy theory will surely alter human history drastically. But as long as there's an uncertain element regarding the control of this power, even if it is only 0.1% of a probability, my work will be nothing but a terrible failure. The restraining power of the stabilizer we used in tonight's experiment was insufficient. The area affected by the excess energy is estimated to be a radius of 3,300 feet. The result of tonight's experiments may please the military people in a sense. The giant creatures that emerged just after the experiment have given me much inspiration. The most important thing to do right now is to leave here safely. As soon as I finish analyzing the data, I will evacuate via the bottom floor. And now, reading the file Researcher's Memo from Dino Crisis, Petros Iwano, who you can find on Twitter at Petros of Sparta. Kirk has been hiding everything from the researchers recently. In a demonstration of solidarity, the Basin 1 lab area staff have decided to investigate what Kirk and the military personnel are up to. As a start, we managed to set a wiretapping device at the parts storage area, where they've been holding the meetings. The device is sound activated and records automatically. It also can play back the recordings. It may be the best way to come up with some clues. We need Kirk's ID card to check the generator. We already know his registration number. It's 31415. All we need now to forge his ID card is his fingerprint data. And now, returning to the podcast to read the file email from Barry to Chris from Resident Evil Revelations 2, in character as Barry Burton, Sonny Bauer, who you can follow on Twitter at Artie Scarano. Hey Chris, I heard you just got back from Africa. 
Some crazy shit went down there. Glad to hear you're okay. And better yet, you brought Jill back. When I heard the news, I was so happy I could have done cartwheels down the streets. Not that my knees would allow for that kind of thing anymore. I mean, after all the shit the three of us have been through, you know, we gotta look out for each other. Watch each other's backs. But I don't have to tell you the value of having a good partner now, do I? Well, you just got back, so you need some time to recover. Take it easy, you hear? If I hear you're hitting the gym again, I'm gonna come down and kick your ass personally. I know things are gonna be a bit crazy for a while for you and Jill. But when you're both settled in, let's all go out for a drink or something. It's been too long. Barry. And now, reading the file Traveler's Diary from Resident Evil Revelations 2, Raging Recliner. October 11th, 2008. So I found this little island in a dusty old book, and it's not listed on any maps or anything. So I thought, cool, a chance for adventure on an uncharted island? I'm so there. Chartering a helicopter to get there wasn't cheap, and as soon as we touched down, the local seized the chopper and took me into custody. So not cool. And now I'm locked up in this dirty old room. These dudes are whacked. I can't explain how, but you know how you just look at someone and something's not right? Yeah, major bad vibes here. December 10th, 2008. Two goddamn months, and I'm still here. This is bullshit. Something bad is happening. I haven't seen anyone, and I can't see it, but I can hear animal-like growling. What the f***? They haven't forgotten about me in here, right? Right? December 19th, 2008. I got no food. No water. Got some rainwater. It helps. No energy to even catch a rat. Not... Not gonna last. And now, reading the file B.O.W. report from Resident Evil Zero, Hunty Licious, who you can find at castingcool.club slash m slash Hunty Licious. Research to date has shown that when the progenitor virus is administered to living organisms, violent cellular changes causes a breakdown in the system. Furthermore, no satisfactory method has been found to control the organisms for use as weapons. Clearly, greater coordination at the cellular level is essential to enable further growth. I conducted a number of experiments in an effort to find a breakthrough. This is my report. Insecta Perhaps because these ancient animals have been genetically stable for millennia when administered with the progenitor virus, they exhibit only explosive, high-energy growth and increased aggressiveness. It is extremely difficult to envision using them as a B.O.W. Amphibia Injecting a frog with the virus resulted in an increase in leaping power and abnormal tongue growth. However, no change in mental ability was observed. Furthermore, an abnormal appetite resulted in the test subject randomly attacking all moving objects. Usefulness for BOW is limited. Mammalia The progenitor virus was merged through the monkey's cellular DNA, resulting in increased fertility. The resulting young exhibited improved aggressiveness and some increased mental capacity. As a side effect, visual power was lost, but this was offset by an improvement in hearing ability. However, they were unsatisfactory as weapons. It does seem that no progress can be made without making humans the base organism. And now, reading the file Memo to New Master from Resident Evil Code Veronica, Zimbo, who you can find at castingcall.club slash m slash Zimbo. Message to the new family master. Sir, Alfred, congratulations on your succession as master of the Ashford family. 
I hereby present you with an earthenware vase, according to the Ashford family tradition. As you may know, this tradition first began when a butler presented a golden teacup as a commemorative to Veronica. As founder of the Ashford family, her intelligence and beauty are legendary. The second and third masters, Stanley and his son Thomas, were also presented with similar teacups. It was their hope to achieve glory as Veronica did before them. The position as family master then shifted to Sir Thomas, to his twin brother, Sir Arthur. It then went to Sir Edward, your grandfather. That was when the Ashford family enjoyed its golden age. It was also Sir Edward's achievements that established the large chemical enterprise, Umbrella Inc. However, when Sir Edward passed away and your father, Sir Alexander, succeeded the position, the glorious Ashford family gradually began to sink. I sincerely hope that the Ashford family regains its glory with your guidance, just as this vase continues to shine eternally. Scott Harmon, Butler, Ashford family. And now, reading the file Mercenary's Pocket Book from Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, Nick Canines Kayama, who you can find on Twitter at World of Nines. September 26th. It's only been three hours since the mission started, but the team is down to me and Campbell. The number of zombies is far greater than we expected. There is no hope left for this city. We have already injected the antibody for the virus, but I'm not sure that it'll work. I don't know if I'll survive. September 27th. We managed to reach the clock tower. Out of desperation, we robbed some wounded members of their weapons and used the surviving citizens as decoys. We were taught to do this in order to survive in the battlefield, but I never enjoyed it. However, the girl showed up at the clock tower before me. She's one of the survivors. She looks just like my sister before she starved to death. September 28th. I wanted to evacuate as soon as possible, but the girl didn't. Her father insisted that he wouldn't leave the city, where his beloved wife rests in peace. I really wanted to save the girl. But Campbell said, all I care about is our lives. That's how I felt before. But now... Clock Tower has become a dangerous place, and I don't want to make any more mistakes. And now, reading the file, Supervisor's Report from Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, Ted Beyondall. The endurance ability of the contaminated guinea pigs is truly incredible. Even when shot in a vital area, they can sometimes survive for several days without taking care of the wound. However, after prolonged exposure to the virus, the guinea pig's intelligence level decreases to that of an insect. Even though reviving the dead seems too disgusting, the virus may still be of use. If we inject the virus into our POWs and release them, they would return to their units and then turn into zombies. This plan may work well for us in the future. In certain areas, the virus seems to have caused the mutation of animals and plants. It may be difficult, but it'll make a good sample for the bioweapon development. I've heard that there is a giant alligator, but I have only encountered a giant creature moving underground. I don't even want to imagine what creature spawned that monster. I encountered Nemesis. If I didn't know about it, I'd have been contaminated and would have become one of them by now. If it is still walking around in the city, its mission is not yet over. STARS members must be very tough since they've survived until this point. However, 
They cannot hold out forever. And now, reading the file Watchman's Diary from Resident Evil 2 1998, Mitchell A. Pruitt, who you can find at mitchellpruittsvo.blogspot.com. August 11th. I finally had the chance to see blue skies for the first time in ages, but it did little to lift my spirits. I was reprimanded by the chief for neglecting my duties while I was up in the clock tower. There's only one thing I still don't understand. The chief seemed to be more concerned about the fact that I was up in the tower rather than that I was neglecting my duties. Why was access to the tower prohibited in the first place, anyway? September 5th. I recently talked to the old man who works in the scrapyard out back. His name is Thomas. He's a quiet man and really seems to enjoy chess. He even went so far as to design a special key and lock engraved with chess pieces on them for one of the doors in the disposal yard. We made plans to play chess tomorrow night. I can't help but wonder how good he is. One thing that's been bothering me about him is the way that he's always scratching himself. Does he have some sort of skin disease, or is he just rude? September 9th. Thomas was a much better player than I had imagined. I used to think of myself as a fairly decent player, but he did a pretty good job of humbling me. But the other thing I imagine that could match his skills in chess is his appetite. All the guy did was talk about food throughout the entire game. He sounded fairly healthy, but he didn't look quite right. I wonder if he's okay. September 12th. I was supposed to play another game of chess with Thomas, but we had to cancel it because he hasn't been feeling too well. He stopped by to see me, but I told him to go back and rest since he literally looked like The Walking Dead. He insisted that he was just fine, but I could tell he was really having problems. Come to think of it, I haven't been feeling too good myself lately. And now, reading the file Elephant Keeper's Diary from Resident Evil Outbreak File 2, Carson K. When I was cleaning up the junk around here, I came across an old BGM tape. I played it to see what it was, and it was the old zoo parade theme. According to old man Joseph, there used to be a big elaborate parade in which they outfitted elephants and Christmas lights up until about 15 years ago. He says Oscar was the star of that parade for years. I let Lloyd have a listen, and he's convinced that it'll be worth money someday. He said I should dub it while I still have the chance. I think he's nuts, but it might be a good idea to copy it for posterity. Oscar sure has been acting strange lately. He's not sick or anything, but he just won't calm down. He got so excited at feeding time today that he broke a part of his cage. Nothing like that has ever happened before. Maybe I'd better have the vet take a look at him. Lloyd's been put on emblem duty this week, so he'll have to stick around longer than usual. He won't stop bitching about it, but he's got it easy, really. The dome is close to the front gate, after all. Speaking of which, I guess the dome is getting shut down toward the middle of next month. They're too damn cheap to tear it down, so it'll probably just sit there for years and rust. What a waste. And now, reading the file Researcher's Will from Resident Evil 2002, Micah, who you can follow on Twitter at Media by Micah. June 3rd, 1998. My dearest Alma, let me first apologize for not being able to call you. A man wearing sunglasses didn't permit any phone calls. Sorry, Alma. I sit here, trying to think of where to begin, of how to explain in a few simple words all that's happened in my life since we last spoke, and already I fail. I hope this letter finds you well, and that you'll forgive the tangents of my pen. This isn't easy for me. Even as I write, I can feel the simplest of concepts slipping away. 
lost to feelings of despair and confusion. But I have to tell you what's in my heart before I can rest. Alma, please believe what I'm telling you is the truth. The entire story would take hours for me to tell you, and time is short, so accept these things as fact. Last month, there was an accident in the lab, and the virus we were studying leaked. All my colleagues who were infected are dead or dying, and the nature of the disease is such that those still living have lost their senses. This virus robs its victims of their humanity, forcing them in their sickness to seek out and destroy life. Even as I write these words, I can hear them pressing against my door like mindless, hungry animals. Alma, I have tried to survive only to see you again, but my efforts only delayed the inevitable. I am infected, and there is no cure for what will follow except to end my life before I lose the only thing that separates me from them. My love for you. In an hour, I'll have entered my eternal sleep, where there is peace. Please understand. Please know that I'm sorry. Martin Crackhorn And now, reading the file Wayne Lee's Note from Resident Evil 2 2019, Lucas Bach Digman, who you can find on Twitter at LucasDigman112. Dear God, blood everywhere. What the hell's happening? They're dead. All dead. It was those men in black. USS Headquarters. Special Forces. But why? Isn't their job to protect us? Uh, white brains in a sea of red. Uh, this can't be happening. Dear God. Why? Didn't everybody say I was a genius? A genius like me. Can't die in a place like this. I always got results. They're screwing me. Well, maybe I'll screw them. I'll win the Nobel. I'm a hero. A genius. A god. I will not die. <laughs>